Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is my fourth video in a series about playing classical guitar without nails. This is something I've been working on. I'm still in the middle of it, making a lot of progress, discovering a lot, and feeling all the potential for how possible it is to play classical guitar without nails. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through some of the actual technique that I'm working on and that I believe is very helpful to share if this is something that you wanna try for yourself. There'll be a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos in this whole series. Check that out if you wanna see the other ones. If you just wanna learn about the technique here that uh, you can work on for playing classical guitar without nails, then this video is the right place to be. So we're gonna cover seven technique items that are helpful to take into consideration when playing classical guitar without nails. One is the plucking angle of the fingers. It's totally different than with nails. That's why it seems impossible when we first try it, but it's very possible if we switch our angle of our technique. Uh, the second one is planting, which is a tried and true classical technique, and we're going to apply it for sure when playing without nails. The third one is string tension. We'll talk about string tension. The fourth one is rolling chords. We'll talk about that. The fifth item is volume. There's a big debate on whether or not you can play loud enough when you're playing without nails. Well, I am realizing that you definitely can. We're gonna talk about volume. Two more, we'll talk about keeping the tips of the fingers soft so the calluses don't get too hard, which I believe is the way to go to get the, the better tone. And lastly, we'll talk about tremolo, which is the big question uh, about playing classical guitar without nails. Is tremolo possible? And I've been working on it a lot, so we'll talk about that as the last item. That's a lot to cover. Let's jump right into it. So the first item on our list is plucking from a different angle than we usually would with the nails. This is the first thing, this is the most important thing. I actually just made a breakthrough today on going even further with this. And all it is is that we want to, we typically will play with this kind of technique when you're playing with nails because you want to pluck where you touch the flesh of your finger and the nail at the same time, then pluck off and let it, let it roll off the nail and get a nice kind of clean, smooth nail sound. Well, when, when we're playing without nails, and there's a, you know, there's any number of ways to find one's own technique. This is what's working for me, and I've picked the brains of a few people who I respect who are doing this, and uh, it seems quite the um, the way to go to play plucking underneath the string. And I said I just made a breakthrough today. I think the even the more we can possibly do this, the better. This is what, and I'll just do some single note if you're playing with scales. Notice how much I am way over like this. This is how you'd play scales with nails. And I'm going like this. And I have to say, every sitting, every time I sit down, I gotta adjust still, because I played with nails for so long, but there we go. I'm loving that sound. If it's not for you, that's no problem. I'm just really hearing the potential and the volume is just fine. We'll talk about volume separately. It's not too quiet or anything. So plucking from underneath, you can see I'm really doing that. So if you're playing Segovia scales or just working on your scales, really I'm doing just alternating. I am here plucking from underneath. So same with chords like that, that uh, example I did at the beginning, which is uh, Lagrima, the B section of Lagrima. Uh, whoops, wrong chord there. But I'm rolling these chords with my fingers as much as I can under here. Now there's one problem with this is the more angle you go this way, the, the more the thumb is not going to allow uh, open strings to ring. So this is, all of this is just stuff that I'm kind of in the middle of working on. I feel a lot of progress going on. I'm sure it will adapt and continue to change. I played an example of a piece in the last video. This is uh, Choro number one by Vila Lobos. And those chords, oh my gosh, it going, playing those chords, that's what feels nearly impossible without nails. So the more I angle like this, the more it feels um, quite secure to do that rather than this, which feels like, I don't know, what I'm getting into. I'm just hoping kind of <laughs> things are just flying in there and slipping. So the more I do this, the more I can have a secure sound. So that's point number one. We'll leave it at that. But I'm just, just to share again, I just, today I just was playing some stuff, trying to play around with it. The more I angle, the more I feel like, the more 
more safe it is. Whoop. So I can feel. I'm getting just that very natural no nail sound that I want and I'm, it's way less haphazard because I'm angling more. Okay, let's move on to point number two, which is planting. This is another thing that is about the security. This is nothing new and really nothing new to say about it other than that we want to be doing it, uh, that we want to be planting. Planting is where you are, I've talked about it in a, several other videos in different uh, areas of finger style or, or hybrid picking or playing with finger picks or all this stuff. Planting, 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 planting is where we want to prepare the right hand finger for just this micro moment right before we actually pluck. So if I, if you hear this as kind of is staccato, it's because I'm planting right after I'm done a previous note, I'm planting out of the next one. Now what if you want it to ring? Of course you let it ring. But then by the time when you're ready to play the next note, there's this moment, ah, the ah, plant play, plant play, plant play. Okay, so you, even when playing fast, I'm technically planting like that. So just big time, big time, we want to be, we want to be always planting, preparing the note, getting a secure kind of place with the right hand. And, and that allows us to feel confident that, oh, I know what to expect. I know what tone I'm going to get. I know what velocity and volume I'm going to get. I know um, I can just feel the security of that. Otherwise, we're just swooping in and hoping something happens and it's not a secure sound. So that's point number two. Point number three is our string tension. I'm just experimenting with this. I am down a whole step every string. So this is a low D and everything is down a whole step. So if I play any piece of repertoire, and this is where it's hard for me, if I'm used to the piece of repertoire, it feels... It feels very odd to be in a different key, but I'm, I'm starting to like it. And, and I learned this from Rob McKillop, who I'm releasing, uh, I did a full hour long interview with him. He's an expert on this topic, playing without nails. He has been for, for many, many years. I have a full interview with him coming out next week, but he really recommends tune down a whole step. So you have a lower string tension. And this really helps with at least initially working on this and learning how to do it. And honestly, I find it just really, really refreshing to have not just that same tuning and the same old lowest sounding string uh, as we typically have in standard tuning. So I like it because it's standard tuning relatively, but it just, it's just a little refreshing after playing guitar in, in typical tuning for so long. So I'm agreeing with this. I like it a lot. It, the, the string tension being um, looser, it just helps get a little bit of a grip there and it's less kind of slippery and slidey feeling. So um, whether these are also medium tension strings and then also tune down a whole step. So I recommend taking that into consideration. Number four, rolling, chord rolling. So this is, again, when I played that example at the beginning of Lagrima. And if I do, if I play that Choro. This is not a recommendation or even a technique advice necessarily. It's just, a, I'm noticing that as I'm getting used to this, it's uh, it's really hard to hit those chords evenly. It is with nails as well. I remember taking a long time to get that down with nails. If you're trying to play a chord evenly all at once with with three fingers, or if you're using the thumb, four notes at once, or, or even two, um, rolling has just made things clearer. It's made the transition a lot easier. So you can roll even two notes. You'll hear people do that a lot. So, a, a lot. so if I play Lagrima at the beginning, I go. You hear ba -da, da, da. This is just me. This is just what I find comforting. Is it the right artistic choice? I don't know yet. I think over rolling is is not that great um, sounding of a kind of an arrangement choice. Uh, but it's helping the clarity. It's helping the independent voices come out um, quite a bit easier for me. So I do find myself doing that a lot without, I'm not intending on keeping it that way. I want to have full control over when I do it. But in the, in the meantime, doing a lot of rolling, um, to help it be clear is 
is helping me a lot. So I wanted to bring that up. The next item on the list is volume. All I want to say here is that when I started playing without nails, I thought I was sacrificing volume. I thought there was just no way around it. And that's one of the issues that people have with it. It's the critique that they often say. It's what Segovia said, you know, you will not be able to play as loud. I'm finding this not to be true. I really thought it was just going to be the case. And as I'm getting used to it, I really can dig in. If I use that same example with Lagerba. perfectly clear. I mean, if there's a little bit of vol volume difference. I'm not concerned about it. It's perfectly loud and I can dig in more and get even louder. Big part of this is just because of that angle technique. If I'm playing with the nail technique, that's what people are talking about when they say it's not loud enough. This is nail, nail angle. It's kind of light and scrapey. And then if you do the, it's a nice contrast to hear that, right? This is with, that's with the underneath angle. Here's that uh, kind of original nail angle. So you can really, you can really dig in. I tuned down a, a whole step on the bottom. So I'm not feeling that, I am still, you know, don't have the security with the right hand that I want to, but I can feel that the volume is, is really not gonna be a problem as I get more and more secure with that. Just two more, number six, keeping the fingertips soft. This is my opinion. I, I do hear that some people like the idea of getting calluses so they can play with their fingertips and have it be almost a nail sound with fingertips. This is not the direction that I wanna go with it. The, the, when I first switched over and started doing the correct angle for, for the sound that I want, the tone was so warm and so wonderful, felt like a, a lute, especially if you play Renaissance or Baroque uh, repertoire. And the softness of the fingertip was allowing it to be just so clean. Now I'm starting to get a little bit of calluses and I have more of a scrape. So I wanna keep them as soft as possible. So if I play a little bit of a Bach lute suite that I like to dabble with, here, there's a section in it where it's scraping on the string and and I don't want it to be that way. And it's because I have a little bit of callus on there. So I need to either change the angle or get my fingers even softer or switch the finger or something like that. So this section here. top string. So anyway, listening to that, not getting the tone exactly that I want there, despite also playing it, you know, kind of sloppily there, but it's a hard, it's a hard piece I like to, I like to work on. And that note there is just because the, the callus on the fingers. So I'm, you know, keeping them soft. Some people will wipe their, their face a tiny bit, tiny bit of sweat there. That really goes against, I'm often wiping my guitar and my hands constantly with a, a little rag here, but but it's re but it really does work to get a little bit of oil, a little bit of um, balm or something. I use a hand cream at night also, so it doesn't get too hard. And um, I used to do that anyway for my nails to keep my nails nice and soft so they weren't brittle and breaking easily. So just some thoughts there. Okay, lastly, let's talk about tremolo. Okay, tremolo, it's one of those things where I, some days I'm feeling like I am really getting close to what I want with to play, be able to play tremolo without nails. I had a pretty decent tremolo when I had nails. So I'm, you know, have this idea in my mind of what I'm going after, at least in terms of quality level. Um, but uh, some days are just off days and I feel like, oh, it's way further away than I think. So the way, whether you're using nails or not, the way to work on tremolo that I find very effective and that is recommended by a lot of people is to do a speed burst where you might do it really slow with planting. So I'm planting. And you hear that staccato sound. So you do it once like that and then, and then alternate it with one time fast. So, or two times fast either way. So I'll kind of get into it that way. So 
what I'm finding is that it's very hard to do this angle that I wanted that I'm talking about is so beneficial uh, to play under the string when tremolo when I'm playing tremolo well especially Recuerdos this piece that's kind of the famous tremolo piece because uh, the thumb keeps muting the open string so I'm not solid yet on what angle I'm supposed to do but I have found there's one functional way that's quite nice and that is to allow it to be that kind of scrapey sound on purpose So you hear that, gotta get that, I lost it. You hear the potential there though, I'm fi When I get down there, it really strikes me. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in the, I'm in, not in the original key, I'm not in A minor, because uh, I'm tuned down a whole step on all the strings. But um, you hear the potential there, and if that's the way it has to be, I'm okay with it. This is kind of approaching it with the nail angle technique, though, with that kind of scrapey, much lighter, can't get, can't really dig in and get uh, a volume with it. But So you're kind of just scraping on the strings and, and letting it be light and ethereal. And Rob McKillop, in that interview, uh, that I that's coming out next week. Week he's a scholar on on many things, and he talks about um, some of the writings about Targa's tremolo after he cut his nails off, and that it's they said it's supposed to sound light and and ethereal and not not the way that the, the nail sound version is that we think of today. So you can see how uh, it's starting to get there, and, I, and as I get more secure with it, I can start to dig in a little bit too. I think that it's gonna end up being somewhere a little more angled this way, because if I do that, I can start to get, hear how different that is? Anyway, this is the kind of journey, you know, I'm happy to be patient with it. I'm happy to just every day, or every time I practice classical guitar, which isn't always every day, because I do a lot of other uh, types of music, but um, I every time I work on it, I'm just exploring and, and it's a pleasure to, and yeah, of course it's frustrating sometimes, but um, it's just so amazing how in several sittings you can feel like you're not making progress and then there's these, these moments that click or these moments that you realize it is actually adding up over time so i'm not ever expecting in one practice session to really feel like oh i i made this look at this exact progress i made in this one sitting no it's usually um like watching a plant grow right which you don't you don't get to see that you see it very much over time if you want a fun little resource to play around with i have an awesome chord chart called chords with color I, uh, it's one of the many things I like to just give away on this channel, free PDF download. There's a link in the top of the description. Uh, I like to play many, many genres and styles and compose and do all kinds of things. And uh, this uh, little chord chart is great for studying theory. It's great for just exploring some new voicings. If we look at one of these pages here and, and listen to it with this sound here. Oh, gorgeous. This is A minor nine. And there's all these voicings of various chords. If you want to play C major, nine if you want to play c major six nine you can choose any one chord and then replace it anyway i love to play with these um, on the nylon string guitar that's why i also talk about it on these classical videos this is a minor six nine a minor 11 b minor 11 Just a cool resource if you want to download that and I'll play around with it if that's your thing. If you like to make things up or write songs or just want to work on your right hand technique, you can do some, uh, you know, right hand patterns with some very cool new sounds, work on that tone, work on that angle. All right, so we talked about the plucking hand angle. We talked about planting. We talked about string tension. We talked about rolling chords. We talked about volume. 
We talked about keeping your fingertips soft and we talked about tremolo. Question for you, was there something I missed? Is there something that you're doing to play with uh, classical guitar without nails or something you uh, would like to hear about? Let me know in the comments um, or maybe you have a contrasting opinion about something that I said. Uh, share away. Let's talk about it in the comments. Let me know down there. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week will be the final video on this topic in this series. That's going to be my big full interview with Rob McKillop. He is a master and, and just a wonderful person. I really see him as a mentor and we had a great chat. So I have a full interview with him coming up next week and that'll be it for this series. After that, I'll be talking about some other cool stuff like finger picking style on steel string guitar and uh, some jazz stuff coming up in the future. Hope to see you in those lessons. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.